What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at the 2020 Subaru Outback Touring XT. All right guys, before I start this video, I wanna make two quick notes. One, if it looks like my bottom lip isn't moving very much while I'm talking, it's because I had my wisdom teeth taken out a few weeks ago. Yes, a few weeks, as in three weeks ago. And this entire part of my chin and jaw is still numb. I, one was really bad, so I don't know. It's kind of making me talk funny, um, but uh, that's the reason why my bottom lip isn't moving. I didn't have a stroke or anything like that, just my wisdom teeth. And then number two, on a much more serious note, I just wanted to send out all of my thoughts and prayers from Bachman Auto Group to all those that have been affected by COVID-19. It's a terrible, terrible virus. It's absolutely destroying this country and honestly, the entire world. And we're thinking about you here at Bachman Auto Group or a local car dealership in Louisville, Kentucky. So we've been affected as well. Our sales force has been cut almost completely to one or two salespeople. We're only doing curbside and delivery, kind of like a restaurant might do. Uh, our parts and service departments are still functioning because they are deemed essential businesses. But most of my colleagues are working from home or not working at all. Uh, it's absolutely terrible. The economy is in bad shape. I know unemployment is somewhere near 45%. People's paychecks have been extremely altered and, and put at an enormous financial strain and i know it's really tough out there and i know people come to youtube come to watch videos to kind of get away from all of that I'm sorry to bring it back up but i just did want to say that uh it's not lost on me what's happening out there in the country uh, and i just want to say thoughts and prayers to everyone that's been affected by it uh, and we're all in this together i know that's corny but it's 100 percent true this entire country is going to fight this together and we're going to get through it so if you're watching this in six to eight months uh, hopefully we are through it uh, and we have bonded more together as a country um, and not lost too many more lives. But to those that have lost their lives or are battling COVID-19, we're here for you and we're thinking about you. Let's get on to the content. Now, if you're familiar with the channel at all, I just walk through every feature that we find here on the Touring XT. Now, again, since this is the top trim level, it's gonna have basically every bell and whistle under the sun. So there is a lot to talk about. Now, starting up front, as always, uh, the color is autumn green metallic, and I think it is beautiful. I think it is the best looking color here on the new Outback. So autumn green metallic, Java brown interior, and it's the XT. So it's got some of those accents around, which I'll mention when we get to them. Now, also, since it's an XT, it has the 2.4 liter turbocharged boxer engine. Two engine options. Most other trims that aren't XT trims come with the 2.5 liter direct injected boxer engine. This one has the 2.4 liter turbo. 30 miles per gallon highway and 23 miles per gallon city. Uh, it is not that quick, although it is a turbocharged engine, but it does have a lot of torque noticeably. So I mentioned the 2.4 liter turbo engine inside. You do have these beautifully re-sculpted headlights here, very angular, very aggressive. They are LED steering responsive headlights, as well as you have a new redesigned fog light cluster down here with LED fog lights as well. So redesigned front bumper, nothing too crazy or outlandish as far as Subaru goes. Basically, this is what you're gonna get across the board on most Subarus. Now, the uh, actual grill pattern may change depending on if you get a Crosstrek, a Forester, uh, WRX, whatever it may be. But most of the time, you get this nice compact front mouth of the fascia here kind of thing. And you'll get uh, some variation design of these crossbars. This one has this brushed kind of uh, satin look to it. Big old Subaru badge, 180 degree front facing camera right there and this nice uh, chrome strip that runs around. Now underneath you have these big bumper kind of splash guard things that are plastic. And then you do have more of that brushed satin down here with another little grill aspect here. Very recognizable as far as an Outback goes, but some nice updates here on the 2020. So something nice that's new in 2020 is that the Outbacks are now being built on the Subaru Global platform that was introduced back in 2016. The 2020 Crosstrek, the 2020 Forester, the 2020 Outback, the 2020 Legacy, uh, and then the WRX and a few other Subarus are all being built now on the Subaru Global platform, which is 70 to 100% more rigid of a body than the older generation and offers a lot more stability. 
Moving on over to the support here, the 2020 Outback Touring XT sits on 18 inch alloy wheels. Now these are a two-tone black machine finished alloy wheel and they have uh, all season tires on them. You've also got keyless access here on the door handles. This nice uh, chrome piece here, as well as the little button where you would put your finger. And when you do lock and unlock the car, the mirrors will fold out. So to, if it's locked, let's lock it here. All you have to do is place your hand inside the door handle. It will unlock and you can open and you just shut the door and place a finger on a button and it will lock. Moving on down, you've got something that's specific here to the Touring XT and that is these satin side mirrors. So you can get black side mirrors and body color side mirrors on some of the lower trims. Here on the top trim, you get these beautiful satin side mirrors that match those front accents as well. They do have integrated turn signals. They're heated, power folding, and they have blind spot monitoring built right in. Now up top, you've got the key selling feature of most Subarus, and that is the eyesight assist system. It's incredible. All kinds of safety features, anything you'd need from forward collision alert to adaptive cruise control to you've got like blind spot monitoring on the side. You've got rear automatic braking. I mean, you have lane centering as well. That's a new one here for 2020. Just crazy amount of safety features off the board. And this is standard. So get your hands on an Outback, get your hands on a Subaru, eyesight is fantastic. Now up top, you've just got a tilting and sliding sunroof. I would have loved for them to throw a panoramic sunroof up here. I think that would have been fantastic, but unfortunately not available here on the Outback. They do, however, have these really cool new crossbars that are retractable. So they have this nice satin finish to them on the beginning and then on the actual bar itself. And then you've got this rubber piece. So it kind of mixes in and looks really clean and perfect with the rest of the car. So you can just grab these little handles here, lift the crossbar out, move one over. Now I gotta get to this one over here. Lift that out, move them over here, slap them right down in there. Boom, crossbars. You can mount your, uh, your extra storage up here or your camping equipment, all that kind of good stuff, canoe, all that kind of stuff that you'd be carrying around with a Subaru anyway. So I have a lot of experience with Subarus. I own a 2019 Crosstrek. I've had it for about two years. And actually, if you guys are interested, check out the card above. I'd made an entirely different tech channel where I'm going to be covering all kinds of different technology, all kinds of different camera equipment, but I'm also going to talk a little bit about cars that I own or my family members own personally. I'm going to be doing what's it like to own a 2019 Crosstrek, kind of a two-year review type situation. I'll be putting it up on that tech channel. So if you're interested at all, check the card above and uh, it'll get you to my tech channel. And hit subscribe on that. It would really help me out. I only have two subscribers, so I need more. But anyway, since I'm very familiar with kind of what Subarus look like and what, how they've kind of changed over the years, I can usually tell when a new model year is out versus, or when a new model year is driving down the road versus an older model year. Here in the Outback, it's a little bit tougher because there really aren't that many design changes. There's just a lot of refreshes, but the sculpted headlights and sculpted taillights and refreshed uh, kind of bumper cladding and things like that are really when you can start to tell. But here in the back, I think, if I saw the back of a 2019 and the back of a 2018, I think I can really tell the difference. So you got these really nice sculpted tail lights here. They have these black accents on the side, kind of make them look like blacked out. They're not though, they're, uh, they're still just, it's just an accent, it's on all of them. But it, they also have it on the Legacy and it looks really good. Now, one thing I wish they would have done, they do it on the Onyx Edition XT, but not here on the Touring XT where they powder the different badging. I love that look. But here it is, uh, it's just, you know, high gloss badging that we're used to seeing. You got your Subaru symmetrical all wheel drive here out back in the Touring XT trim. It is what it is. I prefer the powder black, but the same kind of satin piece here in the back, it mirrors what we've got going on. God bless, I'm getting attacked by bugs. You also have these parking sensors right here. They're gonna help with your rear automatic braking and showing you how close you are to obstacles when in reverse. You also have a rear wiper. This kind of sculpted black plastic piece that kind of protrudes off what could be considered a spoiler. It's not, but it could be considered that. It's really cool. It's nice and shaped and you got a nice steep angle there on the back windshield. Now let's talk about the rear camera. It is just a standard rear camera, but you do, it's, Subaru has really, really nice high quality rear cameras. So I always recommend that and always promote that because they look a lot better than most rear camera systems. So another new feature they added here in 2020 is the hands-free liftgate option. And how that works is you actually just kind of place your hand or wave your hand in front of the Subaru logo. 
and like the force, it'll just open right up. Now, they call this hands-free. It's not hands-free, you literally have to use your hand to do it, but it is easier than having to reach under and hit the button. Now, you do have this uh, easy close button as well as just your simple uh, close here, and you can also use the key fob if that's easier. Here's the cargo space that you've got going on with the rear seats up. Now, you do have these nice handles here you can pull, and it will put those rear seats down. I don't know if you can see that back there. Uh, but also you have this rear cargo shade by default that has a tilting feature to it. So if I can pull this out, boom, it can kind of angle like that, or you can push it like that and it'll slide up and give you extra space. Super, super convenient. Ton of room back here. You've got your cargo net in this nice leather carrying case that just zips right up when you're not using it. If we go ahead and get that out of the way, you can lift up the uh, all weather floor mats that we got back here with the all weather package and boom, there's your jack and all your tools right underneath there, all in this neatly cut foam. Super nice. You've also got some cargo hooks back here for uh, you know, attaching that cargo net to different areas. So lots of great stuff down here, lots of great storage space, and with those seats down, even more. All right, guys, and those are the exterior features. Let's go ahead and hop inside the cabin. All right, so now that we're inside the cabin, let's take a look at what the Outback has to offer. Now, I always like to start up front with the steering wheel just because it's the first thing that you're gonna see as a driver. Now, I could start with the 11.6 inch infotainment center that is all new here on 2020 models. You've got it here on the 2020 Outback as well as the 2020 Legacy. And I would assume going forward in 2021, we'll see it everywhere. But uh, let's go ahead and start with the steering wheel and I'll come back to that. So you do have a nice leather wrapped heated steering wheel here on the Touring XT. I love the layout of Subaru steering wheels. They're fantastic. You've got your media controls on this side with uh, the phone uh, hang up and pick up button, the voice assistant button, that kind of stuff. And then you've got the controls for your 4.2 inch uh, color display right there in front of you, right underneath the steering wheel, heated button here on the right side. And then you've got your adaptive cruise control on the right side of the steering wheel, as well as your lane centering button, which I mentioned earlier. Lane centering is new for 2020. Basically what it does, if you've got two straight painted lines on the road and you hit that, it's gonna keep you right in the center of those lanes, even around curves. So that's a super nice feature to have using those eyesight cameras. Now you also have paddle shifters on the back. So if you put the vehicle into manual mode, you can use those paddle shifters, which I love. Uh, light controls here on this handle and then wiper controls for the front and back on the right handle. Now down underneath, not that many buttons. Uh, usually we see a whole stack of buttons down here. You just have your trunk height button as well as your, you can turn the automatic trunk off and then you can brighten or dim the display depending on what you prefer. Over on the left side, you've got your programmable seat controls. You've got two different settings and the set button. Now, straight past the steering wheel, you've got two gauges, very simple, nothing too fancy with that color cluster in the middle. That'll help with your adaptive cruise control. You can see speed, uh, media, things like that. I love having that little display here. Now, moving on over to the infotainment area here, you have the driver focus distraction mitigation system has been reworked here in the Outback and it is now this tiny little strip on the Forester, it was a little bit more significant, took up more space. Here, they worked it into a nice clean bar. But what that'll do is when you get in the car, it'll scan your face and it'll say, welcome blank, whoever you are, whatever your name is, welcome Tom. Uh, and it'll adjust the seat to your preferences, adjust the climate, the radio station, the mirror, all to your specific preferences. Made an entire video on this, check the card above if you're interested. Uh, so that's right there, super compact, super clean. Right past that, you've got the 11.6 inch display that I mentioned earlier. It's a different aspect ratio, so it's a vertical display versus a horizontal display. That has its pros and has its cons. I tend to think there's more cons than pros, but I made an entire overview of this system. If you wanna see that, check the card above here uh, or click the link in the description. But there are some pros here and let's talk about what those pros are first. Now you have navigation powered by TomTom Tom, and that navigation is full screen. So you get that full 11.6 inch screen size when you use the map system. So go ahead and approve that. And then you can press the uh, expand button here and boom, you get to take advantage. It's not technically the full screen. You don't get all 11.6 inches, but you get a nice big navigation system. Although I tend to not like in-vehicle navigation systems for obvious reasons. They tend to be slow to navigate and uh, hard to find the specific things you're looking for. You have to update them, all kinds of stuff like that. Not necessarily the best, but if you have to get one, you know, this one's 
not horrible. There's my glowing review. Now, another nice feature of having a big display like this is you can break it up and kind of multitask. So if you go ahead and grab a USB cable here, plug in a phone, iPhone or Android, go ahead and give this permission to join up here. Then you can go to CarPlay. So if you pull up CarPlay, it's only going to take up about a six inch portion of the screen, which I don't love because um, I'm a huge CarPlay user. But you can then put, uh, for example, radio controls like your Sirius XM controls underneath. So you have both CarPlay up top on this part and then your audio, whether that be CD, Sirius XM, AM, FM radio right there. And you still have controls up top to customize. So you could put like your X mode control up there. So you can do a lot of things at once. The apps like Apple CarPlay, Sirius XM, My Subaru, and Subaru Starlink are only going to take up a small portion of the screen. The actual screen size that they take up is no larger than if you were to get a base model Subaru with the six inch screen. Like my Crosstrek has, it's no different. Car info does give you a little bit bigger on the screen. You get your driving statistics. You can look at your advanced packages and your maintenance, see if your uh, engine oil needs changed, your filter, that kind of stuff, your, where your tires need to be changed and stuff. Subaru Starlink again, takes up a small part of the screen. The Apple CarPlay, again, takes up six inches of the screen. And the rear camera, when you go ahead and put it in reverse, it only takes up a tiny part of the screen. Not the best. And so does the front-facing camera. Not the best. So that is kind of the downside there that I don't love at all. Since the display has been reworked, it kind of messes with the whole look of the center console here. And to me, it comes off a little bit cramped. Uh, you do have your uh, flashers here, got your volume knob here, you've got physical controls for your temperature here, for your defrost, for your back window, front window, and side mirrors right there. Everything else is a software button, so your heated seats, climate control, uh, heated or ventilated option on the seats, all that is controlled inside the display here, and it is a little clunky. If you want to heat your seats, it's like three button pushes to get to it. I don't love that, but you know what? That's what comes with using software buttons sometimes, and I'm sure they can make adjustments on that in future software updates. But again, about the kind of cramped look of it, everything kind of gets jammed in this tiny little spot. So you've got your aux input, two USB-A ports, and then the uh, Touring here has a wireless charging pad, which is really nice and new, uh, which is nice to have. So you kind of have to just jam your phone down in here and it doesn't fit all the way. It does charge, which is great, but it's just, everything is just kind of just, there's not a lot of freedom. It's kind of just crammed down there. I feel like if you get something, like if you drop like a quarter down in there, I don't even know how you get it out. Like seriously, you, I can't fit my hand down in the wireless charging pad here. So if you drop something down there, you're basically screwed, especially if it's keys or coins or something that's not supposed to be in contact with the wireless charging pad. So I don't love that design at all. Uh, you do have an electronic parking brake, which I do like, and you've got this eight speed uh, transmission here. It's linear electronic CVT, but it's a high torque because of that turbocharged engine. You also have the push button here for your 180 degree front facing camera like that. No other buttons there, super clean other than that. Inside the cup holder, a little bit of a redesign. You get these little pucks here that uh, go down in there. So if you wanna put your drink on that and you get all this gunk on it, you can just pop these out and clean them without having to stick a napkin down in there and do that whole number. Inside the center console here, it's kind of a two fold. You've got this nice tray here where you could put some stuff. And then if you grab the other one, you can lift it up. And the CD player is actually inside the center console here, which is different. Uh, and you also have a 12 volt outlet in there if you want to charge more phones or use any other type of accessory inside your car. Uh, so yeah, CD player in there, not in the glove box. Let's look in the glove box. Nothing fancy in there, just your standard. You have a nice little pocket here on top where you could put some stuff and you've got a nice pocket down here where you could store. This is what you would consider a map pocket, but no one uses maps anymore. So I don't know, you could put whatever you want down there. Uh, you know, an umbrella or an extra pair of socks or a hat or something like that. Anything, those are all random, but things you could put down there, uh, right there. Up top, you've got this auto dimming rear view mirror. Let's see if it's, it does have a compass and you've got your universal garage door home link controls. Boom, right underneath there. Up top, you've got your sunroof controls. You've got this little sunglasses holder visor, and then you can pull this back and boom, there is your beautiful sunroof. And nothing fancy on the visors here, 
pretty standard other than that, nothing too fancy. Now let's talk about kind of the design aesthetic in here. Like I mentioned, you have these Java brown leather seats. These are heated and ventilated with nice white accent stitching. It's a little bit more gray than white, but you've got it running all along here on the center console over here as well. And it is two-tone, so you've got the Java brown with the accent stitching, and you also have kind of a black leather and a rubber soft touch type element with that accent stitching. So it looks really premium. You also have that satin look that kind of continues on from the outside on to the inside of the cabin. Love that. Over there, you've got your Harman Kardon premium audio system as well. Looks really clean uh, with the black and satin and brown. I really, I'm a huge fan of this brown interior, especially with the autumn green metallic exterior color. I think it all kind of works together really well and it feels like a Subaru. It feels like the outdoors. It's green and brown, just like the outdoors is. So it just kind of all fits together in a real Subaru type vibe. So like I mentioned, heated and ventilated seats here. On the driver's side, you've got a 10-way power adjustable driver's seat with thigh support. And if you have not experienced thigh support, do yourself a favor, go test drive one of these and check out the thigh support. It is just a dream. Once you use thigh support, especially for someone like me that has really long legs, you can't go back. I just, every time I get my cross check, I'm like, no thigh support. You've got eight way power adjustable passenger seat. Now in the back, nothing too crazy. You do have a handle where you can drop the seats. You've got two cup holders on the fold down center section, two USB-A ports, rear vents, and heated rear seats, which is awesome. All right guys, and that is the 2020 Subaru Outback Touring XT. Drop a like on the video if you loved it. Tell me in the comments down below, what is your favorite feature? here on the XT. Do you prefer that turbocharged engine? Do you like that 11.6 inch display? How about autumn green metallic? I think it's beautiful, but let's have a conversation down in the comments. And don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be among the first to see my full review on every single new Subaru model as soon as it hits our lots. We'll see you in the next one.